Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering another question from one of our members who wanted to know how to simulate a floating necklace or jewelry in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member over at cgshortcuts.com or on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So this one was requested by Elena who sent me this example of floating jewelry by Swarovski. So I created a few different versions with a pearl necklace and some different chains and another one with some gemstones. So to save a bit of time, you can download these from the link below. Otherwise, let's see how we can do it. I'll start with a very simplified version of the scene where I've got a string of pearls and a chain being cloned in radial mode. I've also got a turbulence force in the scene and our scene gravity is set to zero. And the problem you'll probably run into when you go to simulate something like this is that all the objects are intersecting. And with the chain specifically, because these are all interlocking meshes with holes in them, they're very likely to explode if we try to add dynamics to them. And I'll show you what I mean. If we grab the chain clone up and give that a rigid body tag, let's see what happens if we simulate it. As you'd expect with all the intersecting objects, it just explodes everywhere. And you'd have a pretty tough time getting the pieces to link together, even if you play with the dynamic settings here. But there is another way to do this by combining cloth and rigid body objects. So let's set that up. Let's first get rid of our rigid body tag. And instead of trying to simulate our complex chain mesh, let's make a more simplified object. So let's bring in a disc object and change the orientation so it's aligned with our necklace. And I'll also make it 10 centimeters wide, which is the same radius of our chain. And it is important that we work as close as we can to real world scale. So I would guess I think 10 centimeters is probably about right for the average necklace. Then the reason why I've gone with a disc is that we can also adjust the inner radius to match this as close as we can to the shape of our chain. And to match this up a bit closer, I might just switch to the side view. And I'll also increase the disc segments as well so it can be a bit rounder. And I want to make it a little bit wider than our chain. So I'll bring the inner radius up to there and the outer radius about there. And I think that should probably do it. So back in our perspective view, we're going to use this disc to drive our chain. So I'll grab the chain cloner and switch this from radial mode to object mode. And the object is going to be our disc. So we'll put that in here. And you can now see if I switch to wireframe view that we've got a single chain link cloned to each polygon of our disc. And that's because we've got the distribution of our clones set to polygon center of our object. So that means we can actually control the amount of chain links with our disc by adjusting the segments again. And as we increase the polygons, we get more links and they'll get closer to each other. So at about 200, our chain links are interlocking quite nicely. So we're basically back to where we were before, only now we have a much simpler mesh that we can run our simulation on and use that to drive our more complex chain object. So let's do that. I'll just hide the chain for a second. So we're left with just the simplified version of our necklace and we'll add a cloth dynamics tag to our disc. Then I almost always decrease the thickness for more accurate collisions in our simulation. And we'll see what that gives us. With the turbulence in our scene, we get some nice organic deformation, which is exactly what we're after. So that's the low res version of the chain sorted. So let's now attach the pearls. These guys are solid and don't need to deform, so we can give those a rigid body tag instead. And same again, we'll bring the collision thickness on those down as well. And at this point, the pearls aren't connected to the disc. And because both objects are intersecting, playing this will probably make everything explode. Yep. So let's connect those together. And it is important that our dynamic objects are calculated in the right order from top to bottom. So I might just put the pearls at the top then we'll grab the disc again and add a dynamic connector. And if I enable update live, we can see the connections being made between our disc and any other dynamic objects in our scene, including the pearls in this case. So I'll just decrease the search radius. So only the edges of our pearls are connected to our disc ribbon. And if we now play this, we pretty much get the animation we want and it's simulating nice and fast as well with nothing exploding. And what's cool about this setup is that if we bring back our clone chain links, the chain now follows along with the animation because it's being driven by the deforming disc. But there is one thing we need to look out for though. 
you might notice it's not quite sticking to that surface perfectly. And there seems to be a slight delay before each frame updates, like so. And that's probably because we're cloning to a dynamic object, so Cinema's having a hard time keeping up with the calculations. But we can fix that easily by baking our objects. So I'll grab the two dynamic objects, the pearls and the disk, and we'll bake as Alembic. And they've actually changed this feature recently, which is a bit of a pain. I find I need to go into the settings every time I bake now and make sure that the frame range matches my scene and that I've got selected only checked so that only those two objects get baked. So we'll hit OK and it'll do its thing and spit out two baked versions of those objects. So I'll move those to the top and so we don't get confused, I'll delete the original objects and we'll check this. So that's the exact same thing, baked as an animation within those objects without any simulation now. But we have lost our chain because that was being driven by our original disk, which we've deleted now. But if we switch that out with the new Alembic baked disk, we can hide that from view. And we should now get our completed animation, which looks pretty cool. However, if we zoom into this, you might notice that it is a bit of a cheat and not completely perfect as our solid metal chain is bending a bit along with the deforming disc, which isn't super accurate. But from a distance, I'm not sure anyone's gonna notice that. So as a quick solution, I think it's a pretty good option. And that is pretty much it for this effect. Don't forget, you can save a bunch of time and download the project files at the link below. And if you found this video useful, you can also leave a like or a comment down there as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training and time-saving resources, so you can fast-track your Cinema 4D career. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.